You guys are gonna think I'm a sociopath. Yes. This video. Wait, no, I'm just I'm just ready for it. Save it. I'm ready for everybody to yell at you. And we will be yelling at you are. during this episode yeah. of the F and Movie Podcast. Oh, oh. Bunch, of, bunch of ravens and crows. Oh, crows. <laughs> ravens are ravens. Here. I am your host today. Yes. Price, mm. and this is Nathan. See, I want to point everybody out, give everybody their due diligence. Mm. This is Dylan, your former host, and uh, this is He's Mason. Got his scholar's cradle going Mason. as he is a. Uh, I'm still technically therapist. a host. There's no former. Host. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but today. Uh, as you all probably know, we are talking about Dear Zachary. I mean, you clicked on this video, you saw the title, you saw the awesome thumbnail that uh, Nathan made. So, I mean, what if you're... thumbnail's going to go on this one? Oh, yeah. Jeez, I probably shouldn't do anything too weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> His cat is just uh, just terrorizing everything. And uh, your other co-host, uh, Theo, who does not um, want to be here at all. Uh, as she probably do. She's probably going to smack me in the face. Yeah, she is. <laughs> All right, so today we're talking about Dear Zachary, which again is a documentary, a little change of pace for us. The only documentary, other one we did was uh, Citizen, Citizen, Citizen 4. 4. Yep. I think that's the only other one we've done. I was going to say Citizen Kane. Like, <laughs> yeah, because we probably do need to watch that movie. Rosebud! <laughs> I've never seen it. It's the slut. Huh? The Rosebud is the slut in Citizen Kane. I've never seen Citizen Kane. I've never seen it either, but I know that's been ruined for me. That's kind of like <laughs> a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's well, upset. But uh, while he's away, uh, we will uh, we will play. And uh, Dylan, do you want to uh, quickly recount for us the synopsis of the documentary, yeah. Dear Zachary? I can talk about this movie's this, this plot, uh, this little pocket full of sunshine. So, starts out uh, talking about God. What even is the main guy's name? Zachary's the kid. I've lost track of the dad now. Andrew. 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 Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, it starts out with, like, Andrew and, like, this great dude and all these, like, highlight clips, and then it's his buddy essentially saying that they've been making movies in this whole time. We can relate. And, uh, <laughs> then you find out, like, here's Andrew's life, here's this, and then Andrew's dead. And then now they're kind of framing it as, hey, this is going to be the, like, this is a video of how to get to know your dad to, like, his son, who we find out a little bit later in the film. Also, dies. Um, mm-hmm. and then it kind of goes on this long trend of kind of going from, like, Andrew's life into Zachary's life and how it was all blown up by this one girl that Andrew was dating named... Shirley. Shirley, there we go. Yeah. I remember her face, sure. and I'm just like... Oh. I remember her face, too. Shirley I don't remember Like, that name. stupid blonde man. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Shirley Turner. Uh, yeah, Shirley Turner, just because, like, the... Yeah. But it's a documentary-style film, kind of getting an idea of Andrew's life for Zachary, who dies, and then it's just kind of like a grief processing documentary about a friend's passing and, like, yeah, his son's via processing passing as well. Um, and it's kind of like this guy's experiential crisis to sit there and process it through getting just every and, little bit of life. And it really shows you just how Canada's not got their shit together. You yeah, we it, thought it was just us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Canada's legal system kind of fucks too. <laughs> All about who you know up there. Yep, yeah, yeah, but it's the tracking journey documentary of this guy going through his process of grief of his friend's passing and his subsequent son's friend's passing. Or mm-hmm. friend's son's passing. So everybody, uh, who wants, to, who wants I, to start us off? I like, there's a lot of talking points in I know this, surprisingly I do, like there's a like this is a pretty meaty documentary to yeah. talk I about like I feel the like. fact that all of his friends everyone that was in front of the camera was a doctor or went through medicine yeah mm-hmm. except for the filmmaker which was a very like devoted like huge into film like from the time that they were children oh, yeah. they were like mm-hmm. making these movies so it was just it's wild the the, the comparison between the two everyone else had gone through just years and years of med school and met each other through years of well, med school. Well, yeah, because right. it's such a long process. Yeah, I saw those right. family members. Like, there's clearly, like, the southern family members yeah. that he interviewed, like, the... The country yeah. folks. His yeah. uncle or whoever that right. guy was. Yeah. His yeah. uncle or his friend. The guy who lived, like, in that little in shack. shack. Yeah. He was amazing. Yeah. I, I, like, was I, I liked him because, like, you felt like this, this could be not the greatest guy uh-huh. but he felt so genuine he felt very yeah. wholesome for being yeah. like... and he said like these hilarious jokes which is yeah. why he was one of the ones that actually got me the most was like when he started like tearing up yeah. talking about uh-huh. it because like i did not expect that from this yeah. guy i thought it was oh, like yeah. a rooting tooting trump shooting right guy. yeah he, well let's, let's he, not say that he, like, is he, he also <laughs> did the the whole thing of like whenever he clearly started getting upset he tried to like make a joke or something right like, he made a really good joke if i remember i don't yeah. remember what it was like he, he was actually got our yeah. uh, our narrator laughing yeah yeah. yeah 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 well it wasn't i think it was the one about pool right yeah, like he was saying he's like yeah he's really good at pool but he's like i was way better i think he still owes me like thirty thousand dollars <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah uh, so I'll I'll uh, start off like like talking about the structure of this movie. 
is like or a documentary rather i think is why i liked it so much is because like you think it's one thing and then it's something else and then it's something else mm -hmm. because most documentaries are like one note like this is the issue we're talking about today and this is the path we're going to take to get there. And this one's like, this is how you think the movie's going to go. No, it's not. This is what we're doing. No, it's not. This is actually what the whole movie was about. Because, like, first it starts out with the uh, Andrew dying and, like, trying to figure out, like, how it did it. Like, that mystery of, like, obviously, like, we're pretty much sure that this we're 99 awful... 99% sure this chick did it. Yeah. Right? The, to me, one of the, the things I wonder about is just the way in which he filmed this movie because he has it framed to where the people that he's meeting on his trip up to um, uh, St. John's Island or no, wherever it is. Uh, I can't think of what it's... it's not Newfoundland. Very, but... New, Newfoundland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. On his way to Newfoundland, he's yeah, meeting all these friends and interviewing all of them. And interviewing them in a way in which he uses that same conversation in three different lights. Like, it right. has that Ooh. initial one of, like, I didn't think about as Andrew's the bad, message so. to uh, Zachary, mm -hmm. which is what you were initially thinking. And then he also talks about the same, like, the same stuff after Zachary's passing in the same conversation he is having with these people. So I just wonder, like, if he was just, if he knew from the get-go how he was going to frame this movie. Yeah. I think or that... Or if it was during and, like, things took a turn and then he was like, well, But crap. then he would have had to have gone back, I would think, to at least a few right. more. See, right? I'm, Maybe. I'm thinking, like, it took him so long to make this that he had those interviews, like, like with, like, with you, he may have just done, like, talking about Andrew, stuff like that. But then throughout, like, he says in the documentary that while he was filming, of course, it happened with Zachary and um, Shirley yeah, or whatever. Yeah, but I feel like... Pretty much so every person he talks to is also a part of that later conversation, too, about Zachary mm -hmm. dying. Now, that, I, I don't know. I couldn't verify that. But my thought process is, like, he talked, like, he, at that point of the movie process, he talked just about Andrew, and then, like, with this person, maybe he talked about Andrew and then Zachary about that happening. That's how I saw it, because, like, yeah. it took him so long to make it, because he said it took a long time for him to compile everything. Yeah. Talking about, like, the format of this movie and, like, how he structured it, my main qualm with this movie was Wait, just the format what, of... Are you talking about the editing choices? Because I think you're talking about the editing choices, because I agree with you on that. So, we were talking about it off-camera and how this kind of feels like a Dateline episode of, mm -hmm. like, this, you and know... And it drops in immediately. Immediately. Yeah. And then yeah. it's chipper. And then it's dark again. And then it's really, really chipper again. And it's funny. And it's this guy's, you know, telling these jokes. And then this ex-fiance, like, rem reminiscing on the good time. And then it's just like, then he died. And yeah. then it's just like, what the heck? The, the tonal pacing is very, like, short-geared, right? And that's very just the first middle. ten minutes. Exactly. Like, we're not even talking about... The, the, the plot twist it's later on. It's a roller on. coaster. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, emotionally, it like, sending you up and down. And yeah. just... Really trying to get you engaged, which I like that. Yeah. Like it, it keeps you there the whole time because if it's just like this is the happy part, this is now the sad part. Right. It wouldn't really have you. I mean, you go for a roller coaster for the ups and downs. The editing, kind of like ride your wave almost. Yeah, yeah. The editing <laughs> was wild, this. but at the <laughs> Not same on this time, review. <laughs> this guy who made this movie, it was a passion project. Mm -hmm. The guy oh, who edited this thing probably hadn't had any under his belt, which is fine. Like, yeah. I don't mind some of the styles, some of the... It's a one-person thing. Right. Well, some of, like, the, yeah. the filming and, like, the interview... The interview areas were kind of silly to me, but again, it's just... It's almost like he would, had been watching, like, Dateline or, like, that, uh, to catch a predator, to do that, you know, and all these things, mm. and they're like, all right, well, we have to have this backdrop whenever we're interviewing someone. That is a sit. very odd qualm. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not a qualm. <laughs> I didn't there like where guy, he did the interview. There is one guy where he is sitting at a pool hall, and there's somebody playing pool in the back, and I'm like, this seems like an inappropriate place That's for this. at a bar like, that they used to go to, I guess, or that's mm -hmm. how it's styled. Yeah. Out. It's like, it's so just wild. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything about the movie? Like, I didn't like the backdrop. So, <laughs> I want to... <laughs> we were just talking about backdrops for ten minutes in here. That's yeah. true. I want to say one call I got with, like, the the pacing as far as... Like, the narrative pacing, so to speak, right? Because it's, like, on Andrew, then it's on the Zachary. And then for a little bit, I felt like... I don't know. It felt like I missed a beat. And it was talking about, I think, Andrew's dad... Or, like, Andrew's dad dad or something. Like, they're talking about, like... Oh, his grandparents. Parents. Yeah, yeah, grandparents, the, right. The end of the movie is about the grandparents. Right, it's it's solely in the grandparents section, which was, like, fine, but it felt like it was, like, 
thirty percent, thirty percent, fifteen percent, and then like fifteen percent like for the rest of the film. Mm-hmm. And I-, I was fine with that, but then I started talking about the grandparents part, and it made it seem like the grandparent was gonna die all of a sudden. And like I don't know, maybe just because the tempo of it was off. Well, like, I did uh, so at right. the very end, that's whenever he was like, "Okay, well, this movie can't be for Andrew. It can't be for Zachary." Right. But like that. But see, this is the whole thing where I feel like. It seems like he had to have known all of this before he interviewed people, mm-hmm. because at the very end they're all talking about how grateful they like are how the grateful parents. they are yeah. for the like for Andrew's, Andrew's parents. parents. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And that I, I think just for a brief minute they're talking about like cancer or something for a minute, and I was just like it felt so weirdly focused on them, and it was going into like. She Andrew's had grandparents' a, family. She had a cancer scare or something. Yeah. Or, like he I think you just got the Game of Thrones syndrome where you're like, I saw that person die, so anybody oh, can die. So the, no, the I moment know. where they talk about cancer was like one of his dad's relatives. Right. And I just remember thinking like kind of came out of like left field. Early on in yeah. the whole movie. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't until the end that it was like we take the turn towards being like the parents like, are amazing. Yeah. Like they like this movie is really for them and like everybody is rooting for them kind of thing i was fine when i got back on track with that but i remember thinking for a minute even when they're talking about like the extended family members i'm like wait what the fuck's going on now and yeah. then and then they got back on track and i'm like okay i'm back but i'm like that was a weird turn i think but that all aside like them making it essentially about not only like this movie's for the parents but and also a way for like the the director of the film to be um you know kind of his own parallel processing thing as well i thought was like i like that narrative twist by the time it was all said and done but i will say watching this movie when i did inappropriate uh came home long day at work as therapist, a, as a as therapist. I'm sure you all. If you guys don't no. already know, go check out one of our seven different movies. Like movie <laughs> movies where I bring it up. Well, we do the therapist segments. Hey <laughs> man, they keep putting up therapist segments, and I have to talk about yep. the therapist, which was an umbrella term for anybody in the field that does therapy. This one was a psychiatrist, and us in the field know psychiatrists aren't really supposed to be the best therapists. They're pill doctors. Mm-hmm. And when we hear about the wonderful job that this psychiatrist was mm-hmm. doing, this just validates my purpose on saying stay out of the therapy side. So this psychiatrist, which is just breaking many ethical codes on the paper that they show and there's you know you're presuming that there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes but this guy who looks like kind of a cuck to be totally honest right like yeah i remember seeing him and it was like this guy looks like he simps about 65k for like, to his clients <laughs> for, inappropriately so and for me like it just tells the whole like there's just this whole tale as a as a health professional mental health professional where you're just like Oh my like god. Like that lady he, dude, she fucking help. ringered him, right? Like he yeah. got into the field and like he was not ready for the stuff he was ready to work for and then he just got hope line and sinker yeah. by this chick. I mean, she was very manipulative. Right. We've not so really talked at all about her. No, yeah. I yeah. think we definitely should yeah. transition into yeah. Linda or whatever her name is yeah. like uh, Shirley. 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 She looks like a Linda, but she also looks like, looks a, Shirley. like a Linda. She definitely yeah. looks like a Shirley. I, I say <laughs> Linda. I see both, but yeah. So Linda Shirley, I see a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> Linda Shirley. Let's talk about her because uh, she's a riveting antagonist of this whole film. I guess is how we frame it as a documentary. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think she's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Man, the, when the part that like they were like the like the one that got the most visceral reaction for me was when um, it was not the terrible moments. I hated when the the creator did the like. Like that's when I saw red, and it does like this loud boom. Like, yeah. uh, stop! No, I hated that. I, yeah. I did. That was younger experience. That was an unexperienced stuff. Yeah, that was going me. through on Photoshop and just mm-hmm. like adding. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. one's cool. And just it's what Price it says out. Quentin Tarantino does when he adds random Whee! sound effects. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, back to um, Cheryl. Cheryl. Don't make me forget her name. <laughs> Shirley. Shirley. Yeah. Uh, the part that got me like viscerally like the most was when it like it like told of how she finally like she got out of a uh, jail because like she got bailed out and stuff. And then like nobody even paid a dime really like. Yeah. And, yeah. She didn't have to pay anything. And right. then like they had to like share like it did that tale of like how they had to share custody of Zachary with like their grandparents and like. Like they had to be on the phone with her and stuff, and mm-hmm. all they the pictures the they took with the her. Video the videos of pictures of their child, yes. right? And it like it played the transcripts of their phone because thankfully these grandparents are very smart and like mm-hmm. recorded every conversation. Mm-hmm. And like I I don't know like I imagine these are just like the conversations they always had because they knew they had to be on their best behavior at all times of course. to have custody for Zachary. So I don't think they cherry picked these conversations honestly, uh, but like just how. 
they talk to her like on a normal level like like she is going insane mm -hmm. like like he loves you more than me and she's like no he loves you and like having to talk to like the girl a they child. know yeah. yeah basically talking to a child and you're having to talk her down off the ledge yeah and like, and, like you time. know like that's the person who killed her son and mm -hmm. their only child yeah that that got me it's like i could not imagine having to do that and they framed he framed it really well in the documentary mm -hmm. yeah i thought yeah because i mean it all just came down to like a a, a time span or a, a timeline towards the end mm -hmm. you know like they had to basically say yeah and then she got out of jail for a couple months and then she went back in jail for a couple months and then she got out of jail and they had to share custody again the, the, yeah. the frustrating thing and the thing that really just points out the flaw in canada's justice system is then like multiple times he's like the trial got moved to this day, yep. and then to this day, that got and then to the this. And yeah. then the judge couldn't decide on this, so then it went to this, and then right. they had a retrial, because, or, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's not too unlike our system, to be totally honest. Yeah, yeah. just how it takes so long. Right, but even more so than that, like, whenever you hear, like, the big punchline in, in the courtroom one was when whenever the a special, yeah, when the judge, the and, judge well, the judge and the prosecutor yeah. or whatever, like, the DA, whoever the role was, but, like, she's talking about how it's, how they frame the murder as they're like, yeah, she likely did do it, but it's this is probably a specific case and not a threat to the to general threat to public. anybody else, right? Yeah, and you know, it's like what? <laughs> like that what mental lady, gymnastic do you have to go through to that? Yeah. That lady shouldn't be a judge. She should no. be disbarred, right? Yeah. Because she she's the reason that Zachary dies mm, yeah. in yeah. this tale. I yeah. know that we've been talking about Shirley, and we think that she's kind of the highlight of this whole thing, and maybe she is. We haven't talked about the dad. The dad and his just oh, absolute that. outbursts on these interviews. Yeah, sometimes he would just go, and you know what? I, <laughs> I should be killing her. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm or fine I with that, I committed suicide, or I was going I to. I can't, too. I oh. thought it was very, you know, that was a very authentic thing. When you have something mm -hmm. like, that's a situation where if you're old, and that's like your only son, mm -hmm. and all of that, and they both, like, and he said they even both talked about, like, they were just yeah. going to go do it, they and they're going to go kill themselves, because they're like, what's the point? Yeah. And, like, mm -hmm. I, I thought that was an incredibly human experience, though. Like, it seems like it's a little bit extra on paper, but then you think they're like, no, that's their whole world right there like yeah and they outlive their well kids, i mean they or they their also kid. quit their jobs and moved to newfoundland right like to have to, to try to get zachary right so yeah. like on top of not only still processing the morning and all that stuff but having to stick through all of the shit just to try and to get... having to constantly deal with the murderer right all the time yeah like all of if the it time. wasn't physically it was on the phone mm -hmm. if it wasn't on the phone then it was through the court system i will say i appreciate that they they became such big victim victim advocates of this afterwards and kind of like yeah well i them. also it it's amazing how strongly they tied themselves into the community immediately yeah. mm -hmm. like clearly they were the good guys immediately and everyone around them knew that right yet mm -hmm. the system still Blind just eye. kept mm -hmm. helping a Tr murderer yeah because like they wanted the kid to be with their be with its mom. Mm -hmm. That's what they really wanted, even though like, that goes the grandparents. With anything, right? I mean, that's kind of mm -hmm. like the the go to answer, even in America. Like, I mean, yeah, having, has... oh yeah, having even worked in foster care, they will bend over backwards just because they think that living with biological parents is almost always the best fit, yeah. even when the parents are very far from unfit. Even yeah. like like even correct me if I'm wrong. You obviously know way more about this, mm -hmm. but isn't like fifty fifty custody? Like the mom gets the most of the time, and like the male gets it like week, like yeah. every other weekend there, or there, something. There tends to be like a it's not fifty for... fifty. It seems like right, yeah. yeah. Like timelines and stuff all vary on that case, but there's even if it is split custody, there's almost a very like unspoken heavy favorance to the mother in, mm -hmm. in any of those cases, which is like totally a gender bias because like I know like hell, my friend of mine who I think is like a great dad is doing way better than like the mom, and like at drop of a hat she could be like, nope, I don't want this to be a split custody thing, and she can mm -hmm. cancel it, like yeah. yeah. Which is pretty apt, but I mean that's that there's a weird gender bias that like I guess men can't be good parents in the scheme of things by like legal standards. By proxy, I guess. Right, uh, but yeah, like the the need to be a part of that biological thing is such like a big driving force in there that needs a good reality check because there's so many of that stuff that just drives me up the walls. They're like, oh yeah, no, mom's great. She literally killed the dad. Well, dad suck anyway. Like, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, ah. Eh. She, she literally kind of crossed into another country, right. murdered somebody, and then came back home just to chill. face no true consequences. I will say, though, laid out my plan perfectly. I'm going to Newfoundland, guys. If I have to take <laughs> someone to help, they, they, they probably, he probably won't do it again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, it was a crime of passion. It's yeah. fine. Sorry. 
Those, those are the most dangerous guns. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't help but to think of like Bronson in this movie, where like the Whoa. guy, no, the guy, yeah, the guy just it. he's violent. He keeps doing crazy shit, and he just keeps getting away with it, or keeps oh, yeah, just woman. moves Ma- along into the. Mason's oh, yeah, hot yeah, take was that they should have just killed Bronson. Yes, yeah. they should have yeah. just killed her. <laughs> like it doesn't make I any mean, sense. Yeah, clearly yeah. they should have just killed her. Yeah. yeah. I just don't get it. Like, yeah. this is the kind of shit that I'm just like, and this is this actually happened just like Bronson actually happened, and I just, yeah. I can't, you see the consequences in which if you don't take the actions that you know are true, or that you think are true, at least. Same Wait, way. so you wanted the granddad to go out and kill her? It didn't have to be him. It could have been the justice system. I mean, it should have been the justice system. Yeah. Mason, yeah. Mason's pro-death penalty. <laughs> he could not be more Hell pro-death yeah. penalty. <laughs> There's no reason. She... The fact that she lied. He did the Jared thing? Yeah. Did you see that? I got that that from him. Yeah. 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 So the fact that she lied straight up to that first detective, she was like, no, I I didn't know that he did. The phone call at the beginning? Right. Like her story breaks immediately. In every state from the cell phone. Your literal phone records. And then came all the way back like the next day. Checked into her account at his house. Like on an Amazon account or something? She's obviously. Yeah. She's obviously twisted, dude. And she does it in such a piss poor way that like any toddler could see She tries to act like she's so innocent. And I think so much of that is just because of how the justice system is way nicer to women. Than it yeah, is to men. Absolutely. And absolutely. And she put like, on a had very a nice man done face, this, mm-hmm. you know? he would have been in jail forever. Yeah. Yeah. Would have been didn't. across the line. Like, they would have been like, yeah, here he is. Like, send them on back. But, yeah. Women biased on that. Yeah. So, I, I'll ask the question that I was, I was gonna, I was wondering when I picked this movie is like, did this movie get you all? Like, it, it did me. Like, I was, like, I did at the end because, like, the whole time I'm thinking, like, these poor grandparents are going through absolute hell and then like at the end you find out like they're the through line like that's Mm -hmm. why this was really made in the first place and then they did that like that montage of everybody like yeah we're like we're here for you and like that did that that did get me oh yeah i haven't cried in a movie in a long time and i I did i teared up on on the tail end like on the part where it was like the uptick thing which i think is like a weird place to like find that like where it Mm -hmm. finally hit me in the emotional stakes but seeing like, seeing it being a, like, mourning process, not only, like, sure, this is a, it's grandparent-orient folks, but I can't help but to take, like, director's point of view on this one as well, and taking, mm-hmm. like, this is how he processed, like, his friend's death and his friend's, like, mm-hmm. son's death, and to a family that's so close to him, it's pretty much his own family. I mean, even, like, one of the big uptake uh, things they say early on is that, like, no, you didn't, like, you, sure, like, you still have so many other kids that are still here to the grandparents, yeah. because mm-hmm. they're, like, they're, like, parents to us. Yeah. So, like, yeah, that whole uptake on the end and just knowing that, like, it came together to be, like, this very, like, cathartic, like, coping mechanism or something like that. Like, yeah, I couldn't help but to love that part, and that part took me up a little bit. The deaths on yeah. that stuff, and I'm like, eh, whatever. All right, so the kid's dead now. And I'm like, eh, all right, I guess she's dead, too. And I'm like, oh, that's... See, that, that came out of total left field for me. Mm-hmm. Total well, left that's, field. That's just really good, like, formatting. Like, you know, he, the whole movie, you were assuming... The Zachary kid be, yeah, was probably yeah. 16 or this 20 years old. This kid has to be like 6 point. or 7 or something. Yeah, it'd be a lot older. This yeah. is like, some of those filming parts, they seem like they were from like 02 yeah. or 07. It, it felt really early. Yeah. It was, yeah. It's very dated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because like, like, I still remember like it, like it has a scene and then like it fades to black and then like it opens to the ocean and then he's like, his voice is kind of cracking and he's mm-hmm. like, and then on January 2nd, I was like, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Like I the cannot movie. believe that's going on again. This is but, where, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, too, like, as far as the dated feel of it, it's also in a 4x3 aspect ratio. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. didn't notice. I, so I it, definitely it's for did. a picture tube TV. Yeah. Right. It's what it was for. Yeah. Well, and all of the old footage was the same was way. Was probably recorded that way, yeah, too. Yeah, so might have yeah, been, I don't like, think it, it I think I think it does stick to that aspect ratio the whole time. This, I don't know if he had, like, different footage. that. This movie did not move me, and I feel awful for it. It's just, it's one of those things... <sighs> Because of the weird styles that it used. I mentioned the dad earlier. The dad, he obviously brought the most probably emotion to the whole scene. When he was just screaming profanities, like, randomly, like, obviously out of passion and just, like, forgetting that the video camera was This right fucking there. bitch! Yes. This bunch of shit! Yeah, and like, she, he was, like, yeah. basically just punching the air, like, on camera. And I was just like, gosh, that's, that's just, that's riveting. But it's also taking me out of this whole thing. Like, it was just weird. The step, the story, super sad. The fact that I've never heard of this particular story on any of the My Favorite Murders or any of those podcasts mm-hmm. blows my mind. Because this yeah. story is outrageous. Like, it is oh, insane. Yeah. 
But at the I'm same really time, I'm really surprised he didn't kill her. Yeah, yeah like, or really surprised. or someone didn't take care of it yeah. up in Newfoundland. You know what I mean? Like, but, something. well, yeah. I mean, that's the other thing too. Is like, there's so many people. How much that support did know she have? And love these grandparents yes. there. Right. Like, they had tremendous support in the community. Where did she go when she got out of jail? Yeah, who who was on her side? No Probably the psychiatrist. The, the well, psychiatrist, the psychiatrist the and the, the fucking judge. judge that let her free. Oh, yeah. All Maybe. smiles for her and everything. Right, and like. God, the, hearing the, we have no concern on their mental well-being or whatever, I'm like, okay, so that has to just come straight from the psychiatrist, which should be thrown out pretty immediately, because it's clearly biased in her favor, like, yeah. if he does, if he provides bail for her, you should not trust his opinion on her psychiatric, or her psych mm. state for that, at any point, and should that go to the criticism. This was also in, what, oh, or 99 or something? Or, yeah, this Well, is, no, he was only 10 months old or so. Yeah, so, so this know. was like, oh, 2001-ish, he probably died. I mean, like there were cell phones at this point, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. But at the same, I'm just talking about, like, the, ju you know, the justice system at that point was probably like, yeah, just throw money at it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. So, fat, thin, perfectly fat, fit. Fat, thin, perfectly fit. Yeah, this is be a, tough. This is gonna be weird for a documentary. Yeah, so fat, thin, perfectly fit, uh, fit movie, runtime is perfect right where you want all the content fat movie too much we'd start cutting some stuff out thin movie reverse maybe you want more out of this um nathan i'll let you start um this is definitely a strange movie because it well documentary yeah it feels like it was made for tv and i'm sure it was made for tv like it's it's so much that kind of film and of an era too mm -hmm. like the whole call us to date line like this is very much that kind of feel, and it is shot and edited quite similar to those sort of made-for-TV documentaries. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't say that it's too long or too short. The editing style was a little, little weird, and it did drop you in immediately. Maybe I would almost say that it would have been nice if there was a little, little some kind of Cushion. preamble mm -hmm. to this instead of just being dropped in like it felt like i i was flipping through the channels and suddenly i was watching this documentary and before right. you knew it an hour and a half had passed yeah you know uh, i'm gonna go ahead and go and piggyback off of nathan because again just like last podcast i totally agree um i would say it's just a little thin because like you said the beginning needs a little room to breathe mm -hmm. uh because that's when i first started watching i was like this needs to calm down for a second. Yeah. Let me like take my seat, start eating my popcorn or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. chill out a little bit, get me in this world. Because uh, like in the beginning, it's chop 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 mm -hmm. super fast, and then it mellows out yeah. into the documentary. But the beginning just needs a little bit. So I would say, man, I would even say like maybe five minutes too thin. Yeah, just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna leave that. It's actually fit for me. So okay, I agree with the sentiment that it definitely needs something a little bit better of an intro. Then here's Andrew. He's my best friend, and he fucking died. And pretty this much. bitch, like, <laughs> so immediately. Much. That's pretty much how the movie starts. <laughs> yeah. So I'll admit that. Yeah, probably a little buffer between then and there could have, you know, made the tone ramp up a little better. Shouldn't have started on eight. Uh, but at the same time, I remember thinking, I just have a problem with this movie. The part where they're just randomly talking about the cancer, like can cancer scare with like Andrew's dad, and that like that little chunk of the family. That. That's exactly. It's so weird. Like it sticks out to me in this weird <laughs> yeah, way because it, it just doesn't line up right. I'm like, oh, I just take that part out because it confused me for a little bit. I was like, wait, what the fuck? Did, is he gonna die now? I'm like, and then he didn't. And then I was like, oh, and we're just gonna ignore that we even talked about the family members there. Okay, so yeah, I, I cut out that part, but I had something else. But because it it technically evens out in the scheme of things, the movie didn't overstay its welcome. It felt like as soon as it got all the info it needed to, the story was done, and they're like, all right, we're out. I'm like, they didn't overstay it, so I stay. It stays right at fit for me. Yeah, I'm gonna go fit. Uh, the only parts that like I would highlight is like whenever whenever he first introduced Shirley, right? Mm -hmm. Like there was that weird image of like just this faceless figure of like mm -hmm. after yeah. Heather and him yeah. broke up, then there was a mystery one and but then he goes right into it, right? Mm -hmm. That and then like all of the times where like all of his friends were like, Yeah, there was something wrong with her and it's I liked how they kind of brought her into the story, but at the kind same time. Kind of gradually time, as yeah. an antagonist. Exactly. Yeah. And it, they did that well, because I was at the same way. I was like, that lady's got to be 40-something years old. What the hell oh, is she yeah. doing? And it's so weird that she has, like, 
three kids, three kids, three kids with that have two guys that have nothing to do with her. Yeah. But there was the only time they ever mentioned one of the end. kids was at the end. Yeah, at the yeah. very end, they have one of the yeah. kids just being like, like at the funeral it, it, or something. Well, like it was shows it? some video of him like holding Zachary mm-hmm. too. So he was around when Zachary and his, was. Her there, little girl right? was around too. That was one of the videos. Of, like, whenever the baby would go to the grandmother every single time. One of them yeah. was one of her kids. Oh. Um, was one of the I girls. I didn't realize that. Yeah. I didn't either. Hmm. But, yeah. Crazy. I mean, it's it's a very fit movie for what it's yeah. doing. I think it, it... And I say that it didn't move me. It kept me very interested. I mean, from the time I sat yeah. down to the I very get the end, difference. I was like, whoa. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's pretty fit. Uh, before we go to the, the next segment, I was gonna, like, quick, like, aside, like, what do you think, like, I forgot his first girlfriend... Heather, uh, whatever her Heather. name was, Heather. Yeah. So you would think like, I don't know like what she, there. It was she, a fiance. It wasn't a girlfriend. Yeah, right, like they were engaged. Yeah, and then like, I, I, I think she broke it off. Well, it was super important because like I think she broke it off. And he was like seriously depressed. like depressed him because that's mm-hmm. when he fell into the arms. Yeah. of... They, Surely, they like skim that and then, she, and then she's in the movie a lot, right? Yeah, they skim it for was, and then put her in a lot without having to explain her part yes. too much in it. So, well, it, I'm sure she feels very, very guilty, guilty. because right. maybe that's her way of coping. It maybe kind of? it makes me wonder if like there isn't something that she makes her like frame pretty poorly, but they didn't want to put the attention on her. Like maybe, maybe she, they were Possibly. engaged, and then she was like, oh, "Okay, I'm going out of it," and then immediately starts hooking up with like another dude, and something like that happened. Maybe. They obviously wouldn't frame it well, but they're like, if we paint, paint her this way. She's not gonna be sympathetic, and it's gonna take away like the focus. Mm-hmm. On her. Then people will, yeah, start right. to think of other. But things. I think that would like increase the tragedy of his death, you know? Because yeah, like, but yeah. then that also makes you just see more villains right. around him. And but I think really, that really, he's like, there's, there's like, only one that needs to matter. There's yeah. Thanos, and then there's nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I don't want to try to buff yeah. up her in the meantime, but because clearly they have like a deep connection after the fact. And I guess like whatever it was was. Possibly just minor drama that I guess everybody kind of just got over with, except for Andrew to an extent. Like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess that that would be my guess is that something that would frame her poorly, but obviously she's involved and invested in mourning as well, so he's like, I don't want to put this extra stuff in. Hmm. But it does feel weird. Like, it feels like that's something we should be talking about because this feels like the prequel part of the movie that, like, Mm -hmm. is a part of the first five minutes that Nathan and I would like. I would put that part in. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, yeah. Maybe. All right, so if nobody else has anything, we'll go on to the next segment where I will ask the question now, mm-hmm. uh, which mine is, uh, if you could pick, like, any crime, it could be from a movie or in real life, uh, like, what would you want a documentary of? doesn't have to be exactly this kind of style where it's, like, super personal, you know, where, like, it's, like, friends, family, but, like, just any kind of crime, like, maybe, like, a true crime doc, something like this. Are we talking, like, crime as in, like, type of crime, like, arson, burglary, this, or, like, is there, like, a specific case? Mm, it could be your discretion. Okay. Don't think it really matter. I can go first if y'all want to think yeah. for a second. Uh, mine would actually be um, uh, from Nightcrawler, uh, the um, uh, where he goes to the house and uh, you dead. know like the family mm-hmm. has been killed. Like the mom is is dead, the baby is gone, and the dad is fixing to die. Right. I don't know. I think it'd be interesting to like know more behind that. Like know what's going on there. I don't know because they never explain it. Because it's not important to the story at all. How, mm. how about the uh, the big crime of lobbyists writing laws that then get passed by our shitty congressmen? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, what? I, I like it. I like the crime. anti-establishment document. That, that's here. Nathan's answer. It's just I don't politics. Know what that yeah. is. <laughs> so I don't know how to follow uh, that. You know, it's like the several thousand page bill that was re- the funding bill that was recently passed. That was mostly written by lobbyists, and they didn't even have time to read it. Mm-hmm. And they that's passed. a crime. Right. <laughs> that is. A crime. I actually that, on board that's with right it. in Nathan's character. <laughs> I will allow it. I, I actually really like that one. To be honest, it's, it's different. It is. It's it's a it could be a political thriller so quickly too. Like ooh, easy. like all the background behind right. that. Like, yeah, why, like like why do we do this in the wrote first place? This stuff. Right. And why is it so short notice dropped on the desk of the people that are supposed to be? Like reading, representing and us, and, and deciding yeah. what actually happened. And like, there's the people that were like, like they put this on my desk yesterday. Yeah, it's physically impossible to read. To all be those. honest, I want, I want his the most, even probably more than what I'll end up coming up with here in like impromptu moments. But okay, uh, <laughs> like just knowing that because that's like one of these things that. I mean, politics is intentionally meant to be boring, so, like, they want mm-hmm. to keep boring, so you, st- like, keep so your you eyes away care. from it. Yeah. yeah, but if you make a documentary, especially murder style, everybody fucking loves it. So, anyway, uh, yeah, 
corporate politic true crime doc, I'm on board with it. But one comes to yeah, me. You guys have fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> one that comes to me as I guess if we're taking like crimes, even fictional or otherwise, mm-hmm. that I would go in there. The prisoners movie as mm. as a true crime doc. Like if you just read oh. that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, change it to a doc movie style and stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah, I yeah. think that'd be a really fun like in take on the movie. Twenty twenty style. Yeah, it, like, you don't film. you don't even remake it or put a sequel. You just re like you just revamp the shooting into like it being more documentary style on that one. Oh man, but we don't get those awesome scenes of Hugh Jackman like where's my heart? <laughs> <laughs> they could do dramatic recreations and just use the scenes from the first okay. prisoners <laughs> and then put it into that. So dramatic recreations like uh, Boondock Saints where he's like. Do Fire. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> That'd be a perfect twist on that, yeah. I, I would say a prisoner's true doc. Okay. Would be good. My answer would... is going to be very much a reality, I'm sure, within the next decade, and it's going to be either the Sandy Hook shooting mm. or the, mm. um, what was it, not... What was that one in Florida? Oh, Car- the, the Pulse, uh, the club. There's well, there was a Las Vegas. Club. There's so many of these at this point. Yeah, yeah, there's the nightclub one about. in Florida. There's the big one in Las Vegas, which probably there's the Parkland one. Parkland, Parkland. Parkland. shooting of yeah. little kids who got shot. So was Sandy Hook. Anyways, it's, like, it's gonna be the thing. That's gonna happen. Yeah. So this is gonna come true. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. It's gonna be in bad taste. Hey, as long as COVID's in, those school shootings are down now. So silver lining. So Trump did uh, lower shoot the school Trump, shootings. If we're saying that Trump's responsible for COVID. And sure, I'll take that trade yeah. off. <laughs> he was almost able to arm the teachers too. Yeah. Right before he was able to. God, I got it. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, moving on to scores. All right, guys, let's, let's do scores. Scores on a scale of one to ten, based. Oh, I guess zeros are on play too. Let me take that. Yeah, back. didn't you give mm-hmm. Birdemic a zero? Yeah, yeah Birdemic's not a movie. It, zero. A movie. it is a movie. <laughs> <laughs> it was a film. It was, it was a film it by was definition, a, but not uh, a movie. Strung together <laughs> since. Yeah. Uh, Mason, you go first. <laughs> All right. This movie's tough. This yeah. movie's so tough. I'm gonna give it a seven. Uh, it it breaks a lot of rules for me. Where I'm like, I would watch that again. I will never watch this. I'll never tell anybody about this movie. I don't think that you can. I just mm-hmm. don't. I did tell my wife. She listens to my favorite murder and, and all these podcasts. This is something that happens on podcasts all the time. These crazy stories of these hometown murders that, you know, they bring in all of these neighbors and they bring in all these people that, that mm-hmm. say, oh yeah, well so-and-so was kind of this, but so-and-so was awesome, but this is a lot like that. Can't believe that this movie is real. Can't believe that this story is true, but it's a wild ride. And for that, I guess I'll just give it a seven. All right. I'll take <laughs> it's probably my, my strangest score I think I'll ever give. It's yeah. just like, oh, I don't want to tank this score, but it's, God, it's not a good movie. It's just, right, it's, yeah. yeah. It's all yeah. over the place. I remember I asked you all, I was like, is it okay if I do like a documentary? Yeah, you but asked, you asked if we would rather have a documentary or a true crime. And we said, I don't know, we haven't done many documentaries. Yeah. And true crime is subjective for our things with mm-hmm. I mean, the movies we played. Brick was true crime, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It was more true crime <laughs> than anything else. Uh, take it back. I want that as a crime. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't want anything. Yes. Teen, teen witnesses, I roll right. I'm going to take it from Price because his, his pick, so he'll go last on this one. Uh, sure. I think I actually got to go a little bit lower on 6.5 on this one for me. And again, that's not to say this is bad. Again, this is hard because I'm grading a documentary on a movie scale. So. The thing that takes it down, because I would say that, like, sure, like, the narrative stuff I think is done really well, the shooting and emotional stakes is good, but, like, the editing styles and, like, the little small things we might tweak here or there, like, is kind of, like, a big deal for me. Like, I don't know, just the choppy dateline stuff is, does great for the documentary sense, but at the same time it is also kind of, like, disengaging for me at times. Um, But, you know, again, I come back to, like, how did I feel about the movie afterwards, like, entertainment value and, and stuff like that. And this movie is, I get it, this documentary is not supposed to be, like, entertaining per se, but all media, by a certain sense, kind of has to be to keep mm-hmm. me invested. Mm-hmm. And it was enough to keep me locked in, but it's, like, to the point where I wouldn't go out of my way to, again, recommend this or refer to this, unless you're just, like, crude, true crime junkie, and that's, like, your thing, which, to be fair, is a lot of people right now. Yeah, but, for it if it's you. even for me, I'm like, I don't know, man, this hit, this hits with some pretty heavy stakes and stuff like that, and even knowing that, I come back to entertainment value for the score, and somewhere that just it misses its step there for me. Like, it's it's informative and it does this, but I think this is the weird thing of grading the document. Like, I feel like I need a new scale for it because it just doesn't translate. So, But if it right. does translate, it goes to, like, a 6.5 for me just because it's in the same recommendation category as, like, something uh, in that case. I, I feel like, to some degree, you have to ask the question, how successful was this as a documentary? Right. This, 
got huge reviews. Like, this yeah. guy, I don't know if this is his first project, but damn, he knocked it out of the park. Yeah, it's like a like, freshman interview. And everything. Yeah, it's his debut thing or whatever. I'm sure he did really well with Insane. it. Insane. There's a, an epilogue on YouTube. It's like 10, 15 minutes to this. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the like the main reason they did this, you know, was for the advocacy part of it. Right. And advocacy. it shows, like, the last, like, was, like, the impact of this documentary. Yeah. And, again, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil that because this is just the Dear Zachary spoiler talk. Right. Uh, but it's definitely worth a watch because, like, it's very positive. It's very uplifting. It showed, like, there was a lot of good that yeah. came from this being made. Yeah. So I guess I'll just wrap and say 6.5, but I'll put, like, a big asterisk into the score <laughs> saying that, like, question mark, documentary, <laughs> score, scale scores should probably, there should be a little bit of leeway or something there, but... We haven't done the documentary screen to figure out documentary score scale, yeah. so we'll get there. But. <laughs> we see where they rank, though. Yeah. <laughs> Strangely. Uh -huh. the, as everybody said, it's a very tough one to judge. Um, but I am probably going to judge it, as I just said, on how effective it was as a documentary. Like, as far as getting across the story, getting you invested, um, you know, doing everything that generally a documentarian's after. And I think on that front, he nailed it. The editing, maybe not so much. Um, yeah. <laughs> but red. I, I, That's so yeah, stupid. <laughs> yeah, the, the seeing red moments and stuff were just a little cringy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where it actually went red. Uh -huh. Yeah. But, I mean, really, it, it does a good job. And it tells the story. And it tells it really well. And it tells it in a very human way where it really goes in with you know, all of his friends and all of that, and it, the fact that it's a documentary that has multiple twists is fascinating. Stunning. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give it an eight. I think it did very well. Um, as they've said, I don't really know who I would suggest it to, and it's not one that I feel like I need to rewatch. but, I mean, that's generally how I feel with most documentaries, too, so, like, I've seen it, um, it affected me, so it did what it set out to do, and yeah, I think it deserves some amount of praise for that. I don't think this has ever happened where I agree with Nathan this much <laughs> on anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if it's the couch, I don't know if it's the new ambiance, I'm not too sure. Uh, but that's how I feel, uh, like, the same way about the fact that this, like, the documentary is not too hard for me to judge, because just how we all judge, like, if it's a comedy... What do we want from the comedy? Mm -hmm. It needs to make me laugh. And if it doesn't do that, it's getting a bad score because that's what it set out to do. And this documentary set out to tell you this story and make you feel emotional about it. And it crushed both of those. And the fact that it has multiple turns in it, which you don't expect, but it still fits within the larger narrative that the documentary is trying to tell is really impressive. Um, but for me... Um, just like you all have been saying, the rewatchability, as you get higher on my scale, that's what's super important to me, uh, is the rewatchability of it. And as this movie, I think, is taglined a lot online, is that it's the best movie I'll never watch again. Because <laughs> there is no way that I will be able to watch this ever again. Uh, but it, it will it'll leave an impact on me that, like, unlike a lot of the movies we've watched previously, um, or any documentaries I've seen, I will remember this one. There's no way I'll be able to forget this. And there are so many movies I look back just on this podcast where I'm like, I forgot we even watched that movie at some point. Mm -hmm. The one I still remember is the one in the mansion or whatever. Crimson with, Peak. With, yeah, that oh, one. Yeah. Crimson Peak. Yeah. Like that one's just for me is just so forgettable. It's like, yeah, it was there. But the again, that's the movie. Think of the Play Doh. Yeah. The, yeah. Ghoul, the ghouls in the hallway. Yeah. yeah. Just like was that the one with like the little ghouls in the uh, the downstairs? Oh, no. yeah, I think you're afraid of the dark. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. The dark, yeah. <laughs> they both seem very similar to <laughs> one me. One has spirits, one has goblins. <laughs> one has tooth fairies, one yeah. has. Oh, yeah, the little tooth uh, fairy thing. Yeah, that's what they were. Murdered ghost monsters. <laughs> right. But anyway, uh, back to back to this documentary. Uh, I've ha I had this number in mind before everybody started giving their scores. It was not meant to be a bridging score to make it go sequentially, uh, but this is a seven and a half for me. So we got six and a half, seven, seven and a half, eight. Uh, the eight range is really when it's really crucial to me that like I need to be able to rewatch it and uh, enjoy it again. And this one I will never do. Uh, and recommending to people is going to be pretty 
pretty much impossible. impossible yeah. The only reason I did them is because like I suffered through it. Now you all are gonna have to, <laughs> and it's something really different that we haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. So that's why I wanted to pick this documentary for everybody. Nice. Yep. Mason, right. without further ado, lead us into next week's movie pick. You're gonna keep derailing us. I'm gonna go with an animated movie called Wolf Walkers. It just Ooh, came out. That's what I should have picked. I know. That's what I should have picked. I know. <laughs> it just came out, so it has a very new feel. It's Apple TV, because I've been following it on online, and it's only Apple TV. Yeah. So, good luck getting a hold of that. <laughs> You'll find it. Thank yeah, you, we'll local not. torrent streaming sites, for finding this video for me. It's yeah. got really good, like, it's a really different it's looking It's all hand-drawn. Movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. It, it, it's got a really different style, too, because I've seen it on all the pictures. It looks really interesting. Mm-hmm. So, why, why did you pick it? Uh, I've been, it's on the watch list, and I watched it whenever it first came out, and it's... I thought you would have got your feel of animated movies for me. I was really hoping one. for New Mutants on this one. I, 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 whenever you first said that all i could think about was the the wolf with his fist no oh, yeah i'm <laughs> um, fantastic mr yeah. Yeah. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is the second animated movie that i've picked and the first one was a 10 so <laughs> there should be my and this one's movie. got wolves in it and this one still yeah. has wolves in it yeah. is it the yeah. same wolf is this a spin-off it could be mm. eh, probably not probably is not. there a rat in it a yeah. french oh, rat yeah. <laughs> because that will definitely be yeah. yeah. over real quick <laughs> if the illustrators detailed it enough maybe you'll see a rat in the background off topic i actually got like apple cider a couple weeks ago and it was liquid gold on the top and i kept making the take pictures and sent it to group <laughs> <Dang. laughs> missed opportunity would have loved to have seen that yeah, yeah. But, but anyway guys that's our show make sure to tune in for wolf riders wolf walkers, wolf walkers. Wolf walkers. Yeah. Yeah. sorry you'll excuse me they're so far apart wolf walkers <laughs> next week it's a animated film cartoon somewhere. saloon irish irish, yeah. irish okay cartoon saloon that's, irish that's animated exactly film about I, werewolves maybe i don't know i don't no idea what it's about but you know you sean find... bean's in it of course he is he's always in it's irish yep. does he die yes i mean yeah i don't know but I, are you asking if i am gonna guess that he dies yeah that should just be the question i mean he probably week, would that die. should be the question we ask it now and then we have to pan it <laughs> yeah. next week does Sean Bean die? Yeah. I don't know. Tune in to see. I, I bet Sean Bean dies. I, I, <laughs> Since he asked, I him. always bet that Sean Bean dies if it's the option. That's that a good bet. That's, yeah. that's like your your odds are ninety five percent. It's yeah. pretty strong. Pretty yeah, strong. it is. So tune in next week to see if Sean Bean dies as a wolf yeah. or a human. I don't know. We'll just, well, I haven't watched we'll it. We'll figure yet. it out. We'll yeah. figure it out then. But tune in next week, guys. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you like our content. Hit the bell, bing. If you want to make sure the notifications <laughs> keep coming on up, and hit us in the comments below if you thought that. Documentaries are a weird thing for us to pick. I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of maybe you don't want us to do documentaries because it doesn't make any sense for a movie <laughs> podcast. That's all right. We also put a, a Last of Us uh, review out, yeah. out about a year after it came out. Very so. timely. <laughs> <laughs> That's our show, guys. Thanks for tuning in next week for Wolf right, Walkers. Wolf Walkers. Wolf Walkers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking of... Uh, Tim and Eric, guy kill that wolf. No, I'm thinking of... Uh...